So today I'm sharing about Jehovah Shalom, which is the Lord of is peace. Hmm. Jehovah means Lord or God, and Shalom means peace. And for those who of you who are a little bit confused in what peace means, peace means calm or wholeness or completeness. Good morning, JCS. I'm Miss Stephanie. I'm here at the JCS Story Lab today to share a little bit. It's such, I'm so grateful and it's such an honor for me to be here again sharing a little bit about another name of God. So today I'm sharing about Jehovah Shalom, which is the Lord of is peace. <clears throat> so you guys might be wondering, okay, well, Jehovah Shalom, what does that exactly mean? But it's exactly as I said underneath it. Jehovah means Lord or God. And Shalom means peace. And for those who of you who are a little bit confused in what peace means, peace means calm or wholeness or completeness. So it means that God, our Lord, is the one who gives us peace. So we're going to be looking at two different stories today. First, coming from Judges. So if you don't know, in Judges, it is a time when the Israelites again and again forget about God. They turn their faces away and God punishes them. They, he puts judgment on them. And they suffer in the hands of a foreign king or a, a different land for a while. Then they turn back to Jesus and God, uh, they turn back to God and say, God, help us, please. And God saves them through a judge. Today, we're going to be looking at Judges 6, and the judge, his name is Gideon. So, in Judges 6 1, it says, The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. If you see in the picture, they were actually worshiping other idols, including Baal and Ashtoreth. And this is one of the biggest sins against God because all God said was to look towards me and worship me only. So the God sent them over to the king of Midian. And Midian was very torturous towards them. They, every time the Israelites grew crops, the Midian, uh, King Midian and his people would come and just take everything. So to try to save what they had, the Israelites went into caves. And what they did was they grew crops in the caves and they tried to grow food and do their best to live in these caves. And they were suffering for seven whole years in these caves. And they called out to God, God, help us, save us. And so God sent a man and called a man named Gideon. So Gideon was a regular dude, and but he was really special because an angel of the Lord came to Gideon. And the angel said to him, Gideon, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Oh, and the angel was, you know, telling him, you are a mighty man of valor. Valor means you are strong, you are brave. But Gideon, he didn't really feel like he was valor. He feel of full of valor. But the angel con continues to tell him, go in this might of yours, in your strength, and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? The angel tells Midian, hey, God called you to save the Israelites. But unfortunately, Gideon was very scared and was very um, worried, he said. Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? He says, I am the smallest and youngest of my family, and my family is actually one of the smallest tribes of Israel. How can I help? How can I be the one who saves Israel? So, Gideon says, wait, wait, wait. Let me give you my little offering. And he goes home, and he 
gets a goat and cuts it for meat. Then he brings unleavened bread, like in the picture. He gives it in front of the angel, and the angel tells him, all right, put the broth or the soup of the meat on it. And he does. And then the angel took his staff and touched all the things that he put, and it lit on fire. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? With one touch of a staff, the meat and the unleavened bread burst into flames. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face in Judges 22. Even, and this was when he realized, oh my goodness, this is the Lord speaking to me, and this is God calling me to be the judge and to be the person who saves my people. And the angel continues and says to Gideon, and it says in Judges 6.23, But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And in 24, in Judges 6, 24, Gideon, then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. Now, right before, the angel of the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. You're not going to die. I'll be with you, right? And Gideon, at that moment, he built an altar where an altar is a place where uh, people put sacrifices to God, and he called it, the Lord is peace, or Jehovah Shalom. Now, Gideon received the peace that God gave, and he was able to take one more step towards restoring Israel. He and his men in the nighttime went and destroyed all the idols, the Baal and the Ashtar pole, so that the Israelites would stop worshiping idols. And because of God's peace that was given to Gideon, he was able to overcome his fear. Like, right. So, like I said, Jehovah Shalom means the Lord is peace. In this time, God was able to take Gideon, who was afraid, who felt like he was small and he was not strong enough to defeat and the Midian, Midian, bring the Israelites back to God. God gave him peace. He gave him an unshakable peace that strengthened him so that he was able to help the Israelites come back to God. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus also is a giver of peace. Just like in the Old Testament, God gave peace to Gideon, Jesus gave peace to his disciples. So, when it was time of Jesus' death and resurrection, there was a time period when the disciples were afraid. <clears throat> It says in John 20, verse 19, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the, for, were for fear of the Jews. The disciples, after Jesus had died, they were scared because the Jewish leaders, they were scared of what the Jewish leaders would do to the followers of Jesus because, well, Jesus was died on the cross. But, in this time when they were all together in a locked room, there was a miracle that happened. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Now imagine that. You are a disciple and you're scared because the person you've been following for three years or a little bit less than that died on the cross and you know that he was in the tomb and all of a sudden you're with your disciples and you're scared and you're locked the room and you're kind of worrying you don't know what to do next and all of a sudden the person you follow Jesus is standing right in front of you and he tells you peace be with you I don't know about you but I feel like I would it would be unbelievable 
and not only one time. Jesus said to them again in John verse 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. Now, Jesus, of course, knew that the disciples were worried and in fear of, for their lives at this time. So he came and showed them, hey, I'm alive and peace be with you. Let you have calm, let you have fullness so that you are not scared and you are not worried. Like in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, Jehovah Shalom means that the Lord is peace. He gives us a peace that is not shakable. It will never change and it gives us the strength to do and go out and be able to share God's love. Just knowing that God is on your side gives you the feeling that, oh, and knowing that you can do something. And coming from a person who worries a lot, when I was learning a little bit more about how God gives us peace, I thought, hmm, there are so many times in my life where I worry about things, whether they're big or small, but if I have the peace of God, knowing who I am, knowing what God did for me, these worries seem smaller and they subside. I want to read a verse together with everybody. And this verse was Jesus telling his disciples way before he actually went on the cross. And this was him granting peace to the disciples. It comes from John 14, verse 27. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I do give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Yes, I love this verse because this is not only Jesus giving peace to his disciples, but we could also, as God's children now, see that God grants us peace. And there's a lot of times, especially in um, knowing that there's chaos all around the world, and even with the coronavirus pandemic, that there is fear. But it tells us in the Bible that God gives us peace, gives us peace so that our hearts will not be troubled and we do not need to be afraid. Oh, so I want everybody to remember that Jehovah Shalom means the Lord is peace. He gives us the feeling of calm, of wholeness, of tranquility, of harmony, and that's not like any peace that the world can give. Our God is our creator, so this peace is unshakable, and it is something that we have in our hearts that will help us go through our lives looking towards Him. Let's pray. Father God, you are the giver of unshakable peace. We thank you that we learned about your name, Jehovah Shalom, today. Please give each and every one of us the peace that you gave to Gideon and the disciples. Let us be strengthened by your peace. We love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.